Hello and welcome to our first Sunday in August, the first, and we're glad you're here to share together our meditation and our worship and our Lord's Supper this day. And I invite you this day to join me in our call to worship. Let us share it together. Shout with joy before the Lord, O earth, obey him gladly. Come before him singing with joy. Try to realize what this means. The Lord is God. He made us. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Go through his open gates with great thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is always good. He is always loving and kind. And his faithfulness goes on and on to each succeeding generation from Psalm 100. And as we gather this day, on this first Sunday in August, we share greetings with each other. Greetings of saying hello, welcome, how are you? Greetings of peace and well-being. And as we journey this month, a sense of God's presence to walk with us. Jesus gave that greeting as a simple Hebrew word, which we share today. I invite you to share at home with those who may be with you. Shalom, peace, well-being. Shalom in Christ. And we ask that that shalom be the presence, the word that guides us, 
as we light this candle to bring peace, well-being, love, and hope to all of God's people, and that our journeys be that of rest and hope and faith. We share this together in Christ's name. Again, shalom in Christ. Shalom. As we gather this Sunday, I invite you to share with me our prayer preparation for this day. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, fill us with the light of your love. Help us to love our brother and to see him. Help us to understand our brother's struggles and burdens. Lift us up and hold us as we, as we do thy will. Show us the way and the path that leads to you and eternal life. Prepare us for the journey with kind hearts and open hands. Continue to fill us with knowledge and wisdom in our decision making. Help us to be mindful of our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray this day. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this day for the meditation is in John's Gospel, the 11th chapter, the 25th and 26th verses. It says this, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. May God add blessings to this reading of the word and bring blessings to those who hear this word and transform the spoken word into the living word in their hearts and minds and beings. This particular passage is from <clears throat> the story of Lazarus and his passing. <clears throat> and the person Jesus is speaking to is Martha to give her reassurance. And in John's Gospel, we have a number of things of who Jesus is. At the beginning of the Gospel, Jesus is the Word, the Word of God, the logic of God, the presence of God in human form. Jesus is the living water that fills our thirst of body, mind, and spirit. Jesus is the light, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. And then there is the passages, the three I am's. I am the door. That means essentially, he is the gateway to God. And having that gateway, it's open for us to come and to be with God, to know God's presence, God's love, warmth and compassion for us. I am the door, Jesus said. He also said, I am the good shepherd who cares for the flock, for God's people. I care for you and I watch over you that you will be safe and secure in your persons. And then the third is, I am the resurrection and the life. As it says also, I am the resurrection and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus is that resurrection. Another term in, <clears throat> in Aramaic for it is consolation. I am God's consolation for you. I am the resurrection. Again, the sense is to come up, to lift up. We've been at a time these past number of months, as I've said many times in the messages, through a dark period, an uncertain period, a frightening period. It's still not over. But there is life that we too can rise up as a people of faith. That through Jesus we experience the resurrection, not in the hereafter, but in the here and now, in our own lives. That we can be lifted up. If we are troubled of mind, worried, anxious, our faith in Christ can give us relief and hope. The power of prayer that we can say through the Lord's Prayer to God lifts us up to strengthen us. That Jesus the Resurrection tells us we are not alone. There is someone there to guide us. And even if we pass through the moments of life which are troubling, there can be relief, well-being, and hope. Jesus said, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. I think in that sense is a parable. They're not even about just physical death, but spiritual death, moral death, an absence of life around us. That even though we may feel these things, that there can be hope, help, healing we can rise up. That is the good news of our faith. I may say it simply as the old childhood song, Jesus loves me, this I know, or the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves us and wants us to rise up, to know the power of life. And in that belief, it goes beyond death. There's a hope that from our beginning, through our journey, and through our ending, there is someone there to hold us, to envelop us, 
and to lead us. As I've said often in funerals, but in the spiritual, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. I look across the river, and what did I see? I'm going to say to it, Christ coming forth to carry us, carry us through life's moments, through this time of hardship and uncertainty, through this time of fear and anxiety, to bring resuscitation, renewal, relief. Jesus is for us the door that leads to God, the good shepherd that watches over us, and the good news of the resurrection that we have that life in all moments and all times and through all ages. Jesus is our resurrection and our life and within us. Again, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend. What a Savior. To be with us, guide us, and to lift us up and help us pass through, to pass over. That indeed, in the words of the spiritual, we shall overcome the moment. We shall overcome this moment in time together to again have that day when we meet all together in worship, to have a service of resurrection, of the renewal of our lives. God bless you and God keep you this day and every day. And know that the good news is with you now and forever and ever. Amen. We gather this day. <coughs> on this first Sunday in August, to observe our Lord's Supper. It is a very simple meal. It is a meal that gives assurance of God's presence, Christ's love, and this presence of the Holy Spirit with us and within us and through us. We share together. As I've said often enough, it is called communion. We share it together. It's called the Last Supper. The Last Supper that Jesus ate with his disciples before his death and resurrection. And in some traditions, the Eucharist, which I give thanks. We give thanks. God's gift to us in Jesus. I also suggest that for us as believers, that moment that Jesus met with his disciples, his apostles, his family and friends in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem, was not a last supper, but a first supper of our faith. And recall the story that that night they gathered in that room as we gathered together this day. And Jesus took bread, a source of life, a source of well-being, a source of hope. And he broke the bread. and said to those gathered that night and to us again this day, this is my body given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In a sense, is inviting Christ's presence within us to have a sense of well-being, that Christ is not out there, but with us and within us to guide us. And again that night, and again this day, Jesus took a cup, a cup in the Hebrew faith that says this is the presence of God, a cup that has wine, which is a sense of hope and refreshment and well-being. And he shared that cup with these words that night and for us this day. This cup is a new covenant in my blood given for each of you for the remission of sin, the removal of sin, the removal of pain and hurt and suffering, that you can be refreshed, experience life in its fullest. And this day, I invite you to share, if you can at home, with me these words. As I dip the bread into the cup, to say, the bread of the new covenant given for me, and the cup of the new covenant shed for me.
Amen. As we gather for prayer, I invite you to lift up in prayer those who need a word of hope, a word of well-being, a word of life, for those who are suffering from still the infection that surrounds us, from violence, from loss, from prejudice. But also lift up the good word of hope. We are people of good news, of faith, that God's Son who is with us and whose spirit is within us can give us resurrection and life that is everlasting. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving God, from your hands you formed us in your image, male and female. You gave us the breath of life. But each time we take in the breath, it is your presence with us. We pray this day for the good news of hope. We know there is suffering, loss, and pain. And we lift up to you our own needs, our own worries, concerns, and hurts. We lift them up also for the world around us, for those who are suffering from the pandemic, those who have experienced loss of loved ones from the pandemic. We lift them up to give them the assurance that you are there with them now to help and give presence and peace. We pray for those who have experienced violence, hatred, and bias, that you strengthen them and encourage them to let them know that they are in your image, your people. And we give prayer this day for thank of thanksgiving, thanking you that you've been with us, you've abided with us, you help us to gather together and share the bread of life, the cup of a new covenant which fills us and gives us joy. We ask your presence in these coming summer days to walk with us and talk with us and be with us through Jesus our Savior. Hear our prayers this day, most gracious God. Walk with us, our friend Jesus, please walk with us. And may the Holy Spirit be the sense of courage and strength as we go forth through each day until we meet again. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you now to share with me the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being with me on this first Sunday in August. I am going on vacation, as you may know. While I'm away, if there's a pastoral need, emergency, please contact Elizabeth Hemingway. Her phone number is in the good news notes, and she'll contact the clergy on call for me. Also, next Sunday, we have the Reverend Emily Brown sharing with us. And the following Sunday, Elisa Holliday, chaplain 
in Boston at a local hospital there. Have a good summer. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care and God bless. And as we go, I invite you to share with me our benediction for the day. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with all my whole heart. Go in peace. Amen.